in the lab late one night. Hi guys, I thought I'd do my first ever uh, face to camera with the camera held out of my arm. Um, this was prompted by the uh, um, competition of the wheels go round and round. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, said, well what do you do on a weekend? And I actually did say, well, you know, the wheels go round and round, and then realised that uh, that might just be uh, a good cue to uh, to make a, a short uh, film. Um, the editing is going to be fairly poor because I'm going to try and do it all in camera as we go. Uh, but uh, what I do, one of the things I've been doing for the last three weeks is trying to build what's called a hydrogen torch. Uh, a lot of technologies these days are going over to uh, generating hydrogen and uh, a hydrogen generator is something I've wanted to build for a while. Uh, I'm onto what can only be described as version 3, which is actually on the bench here now. Uh, what we've got there, uh, we started out with uh, a different chamber. The original chamber I actually cut out on the laser cutter and it looked very interesting etc and leaked like a sieve. So we're back over to using uh, food containers um, one of the things I did discover that uh, the containers are airtight, but they're not pressure vessels. So all the gaffer tape is about trying to hold the lid on, so that it actually forces the gas through the through the pipe. Now the big problem that you've got before you get to that stage is you need a lot of power. Uh, I tried lead acid batteries and burnt them out. Uh, tried using battery chargers and there just wasn't even enough power in there. Uh, the particular cell, if I actually take it right down to the cell, what we've got there is we've got six sheets of uh, stainless steel that are separated by plastic um, thread and uh, each individual side, if you actually look, you can see, we'll try and get a close-up shot with this camera, you can see that the corners are taken off so that three of the corners stand up and there's a bolt actually runs along the top there uh, with three conductors those conductors then go up to a stainless steel bolt. I did initially try to have the wires come out the top but found that I was getting leaks left, left right and centre. So each of the bolts uh, connect to three of the six plates, uh, 1B plus 1B minus. I then came up with the idea of what I needed was more power ego. So I thought well the one thing I can use is a uh, stick welder uh, and of course that did nothing because one of the things a stick welder does is it actually produces alternating current which from a HHO generator's point of view is useless so on Friday this weekend I sat down and built this rat's nest which are, is uh, 10 40 amp rectifiers straight out of Hong Kong um, I've tried to do double redundant wiring so that the, cur the current can go either way up the wires, on the basis of a wire gets hot it can get supplied from another side. Uh, there's four sets of 27 amp cable going back to the two terminals, so you have uh, effectively 100 amps on each cable, and then that goes down to three sets of cables on the uh, on the actual bit of crocodile clips, which is at this stage down to direct current. So. What we've got then is uh, the next thing in the line, we've got what's called a bubbler. I did try a uh, run it without a bubbler, and I'll bring you a shot up now and show you what happened. Uh, one of the problems that you get of course is because you are generating hydrogen and oxygen, you've effectively got an explosive mix. And uh, basically what, ha what happens is that you light the torch at this end, and uh, the, it literally runs straight up the the pipe and then blows the top off the um, chamber. Now then one of the things I tried to do was keep the level of the water very high so what gas was there uh, was um, uh, minimal and I've got to say that it was not much more exciting than blowing a balloon up in sound terms. Uh, it did obviously take, it fracture the plastic but none of the plastic um, went around the room. Uh, I also, as you've seen in the first shot I automatically wear uh, safety glasses and that what's in there is mostly water with a teaspoon of caustic soda. Uh, you can actually wash your hands in it, it's that uh, inert. So it, I'd have to be unconscious uh, with this sat on me for two days before I'd even get a skin rash.
So although theoretically what we're doing is quite dangerous, um, in reality if you sit down and think about the way you do things and keep things to a minimum, when it does go wrong it only goes mildly wrong. I've now added a bubbler. Um, one of the things that uh, the bubbler is tended to do is try to isolate your cell from the flame. Uh, but of course, uh, and also it's a nice indication of how much gas you're producing, uh, and it does help take some of the moisture out of the gas to help dry it. It isn't perfect because it doesn't take a lot out, it puts as much in as it takes out. And right at the bottom we've got a little fishing tank uh, bubbler just to help so that the bubbles are smaller rather than um, big lumps. It helps, as I say, it more or less quantifies things. I'll show you a picture of the last bubbler that I had. That particular one um, was uh, blown up this morning. Uh, again, unfortunately, um, one of the big problems you have is building spark arresters. Uh, in industry, spark arresters exist as uh, standard equipment, but of course everything we're working with here is much smaller tubing. And so in that piece of uh, glass there uh, is uh, my latest generation spark arrester. Uh, I was using a different torch to this, I actually made my own torch uh, using uh, the lathe, which what we've got there is a uh, standard um, air, air valve. Uh, I then produce the front part, which then goes down to a MIG tip. Now then the problem I was finding was that the MIG tip hole was too small, uh, and so what I was doing, I was only getting a tiny flame which meant I was struggling to actually warm bits of the gun. And if this gun won't produce a good flame, or this system won't produce a good flame, then uh, it serves no purpose. Now, I'm trying, I thought, well, what I will do is pull my uh, gun out from when I used to have oxyacetylene. Uh, I let that go because British oxygen just don't know what to charge for um, their cylinders anymore. And so what I thought I would do is I'd uh, try this out. And in the back of there, <coughs> I've put a spark arrestor. What you do is you get bronze wool, um, using bronze wool because it won't burn unlike you, what, um, steel wool would. You actually roll that up into a little, uh, like a cigarette uh, filter, and push that in the hole. So hopefully, that will uh, spark arrest if this decides to let the gas on the, on the way up. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the thing, just double check that the valve is open on the torch because the system can't really stand a great deal of pressure it's actually designed that if the pressure gets too big what it will do and so what we're seeing there now is you can see the gas being produced inside the chamber that's a mixture one plate produces hydrogen one plate produces oxygen that is now then going through the bubbler so we've quite a nice amount of gas being produced Again, I haven't sealed that bubbler yet, so I don't know just how much I'm losing out of the top, I may lose quite a bit. But part of it says I can lose a little bit to atmosphere, it's not harmful as oxygen or hydrogen. And then it's down to how much is actually coming out of the torch. So one or two things will happen. When I light this torch, the top of that um, bubbler will blow, uh, or we'll end up with a rather nice little flame at the end. So, in we come with the flame. And as they say, watch out for the bits. Yeah, basically, my spark arrestor didn't work. And what that's done is that's taken the top off the... Uh, off the... Uh, the fairly uneventful. It's annoying, because I now have to make another one. It also means that my uh, spark arrestor uh, is failing in there. And uh, as <laughs> we go back to the beginning, uh, as they used to say, go back to the drawing board, or as I started out thinking about this video, the wheels go round and round. Right, so what I've done is I've taken the uh, original gun, which is the one I manufactured on the lathe, taken that apart, and I'm going to uh, put in another part spark arrestor. That's the bronze wool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll that up into a sabo, and I'm going to make a spark arrestor that's the full length of that... Uh, um, torch on a basis that uh, it's more important that it spark arrests than worry about gas flow. What I have done is I've taken what was a point, standard point 6 MIG tip and um, drilled that out to um, point 0.8, it's having trouble focusing on it, 
uh, sorry, 1.5 mil on the basis of trying to get a better torch. Uh, we'll see, experiment number thing, number thing, number thing, experiment number thing. We're not keeping a proper record. Right, so I've uh, built the extended spark arrestor in the uh, in the torch. Um, there's only one way to test whether they work, I'm afraid, and uh, that's to uh, throw some gas through it and try and light it. Uh, one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to be uh, back to blowing another lid off one of these, which uh, fortunately I do have another two. Uh, it is annoying if I do, because uh, I have to remake that lid each time. Uh, on the bubbler, I've not bothered with the um, end. Uh, I decided that uh, it wasn't really achieving anything um, apart from creating more pressure and we've got the homemade torch on there uh, which is wired up, we'll put that on the end hopefully, even with the 1.5mm tip if it does run, up, run back up there because there isn't enough gas flow then uh, it should stop there in, in that section there because the wool should stop, just like a Davy lamp principle should stop the uh, flame running back. Uh, this is the problem. Till I get the spark arrestor sorted, uh, I really can't uh, go much further with this experiment. That's got to be one of the major safety things because um, one of the things I would like to do is add into the middle of this wire a balloon, or the, sorry, the middle of this tube a balloon, so that as this produces gas, if we're not using it, it fills the balloon up and uh, that both becomes your pressure vessel and your safety vessel if it does burst then all you've got is bits of balloon flying around the uh, thing not really um, going to do a lot of damage uh, we're not going to be going to casualty uh, but in the same breath we don't want balloons banging off unless uh, uh, unless we you know we'd, we'd know that it's because we've got other, a real problem so we're back down to stand well back and blow another lid off and uh, this is uh, the part of the experimentation. We'll turn the power on to the thing, which means that we start producing gas again. Um, you can see the gas coming through the system. There's quite a lot of gas there, so we should be getting quite a good flame. I have also super glued this lid on, so that means it should be forcing that gas through the gun now, which a certain amount of not getting a blow back is actually having good gas flow. I'm also talking a bit and allowing that to keep going, partly because I want to make sure that there's no air in that chain, uh, although it, it is an explosive gas we want it to be gas uh, and give the actual system a chance to vent to air before we start lighting it. So based on the bubbles, which are quite large bubbles, I'm hoping that the gas flow is going to be good enough so we don't end up with another bang but this is the thing about experimentation sometimes it goes wrong and at some stage you've got to make a decision and say we're going to give it a go yeah bit better bang that time it's one of the advantages of having it uh, super glued on but we now know for certain that that spark arrestor isn't working very annoying. Right, so what I've done at the moment, I've uh, added uh, a balloon to the system. Uh, I wanted to see uh, if the system was struggling to get all the uh, pressure through. Uh, I did have a minor leak on there. I've put some fair liquid on just to see if I could spot the leaks. And I've got, so got rid of the leaks on top of the um, bubbler. So we're now in a situation where that balloon isn't really getting much bigger. If it is, it's only slowly getting bigger, which means that it must be coming through the torch. Either that as it's leaking in areas that I've never seen the systems leak before. So, there is obviously a tiny little bit of water production. That balloon is growing slower. What I'm going to do is just prove that by turning the power off. And we'll see how long it takes for that balloon to go back down. Which is also useful because what it does is that means that if we do turn the power off we are still getting gas through the gun. I'm also just going to check the heat of the rectifiers, they are getting quite warm. 
So, uh, they are doing the job, but they are, there is a lot of power going through there, to say the least. So the question is, do I dare try and light this with that balloon on there? Right, so I've totally rebuilt the um, bowl chamber and what I've done is I've totally rebuilt the uh, spark arrestor. Uh, I did an experiment with the balloon halfway through uh, between this and the last shot that showed me that despite what I was thinking all the bubbles were getting straight through the torch and uh, I, despite me thinking that this was actually being held up in reality, I'm not producing as much gas as I think. So we'll uh, turn the system on and we'll open the torch up, give it a second or two for the gas to be flowing. Then we're just waiting for it all to go. And then, like I said, the new spark arrestor is working totally better and there we go one hydrogen torch fully working that flame there is reputed to be able to melt glass uh, one thing that's obvious is that I do need to uh, improve the gas flow because although that's a nice flame uh, it's actually a very, it's one of the best flames I've seen since I started this that's probably quite sufficient for doing uh, jewellery work. Um, it's self-maintaining. The system uh, seems to be running okay. What I want to do is add some big blocks underneath the um, rectifier to help cool that down because uh, even at uh, the, uh, with the thing set at the minimum, uh, I'm still getting the rectifier is getting quite hot and the wire is getting quite hot. And there we have it. A flash comes to my face and my pulse begins to race. It goes boom booty boom booty boom booty boom booty boom booty boom booty boom 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 boom